Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Bosco the Musketeer, released in 1933. It's the 63rd in the series and it's directed by Hugh Harmon. Apologies for the rather crummy print here. Since I did the original audio commentary a few years back, sadly no upgrades have surfaced, whether official or through some sort of a film scan. Hopefully that'll change, you know, hopefully one day we'll get the complete Bosco restored through Warner Archive, but hey, you know, one can dream, can't I? But anyway, we'll just have to make do. And I can't show you the full cartoon here due to copyright on YouTube, so essentially, you've got Bosco and Bruno heading over to Honey's house. Once they arrive, Bruno seems to have disappeared, and Bosco tells a story about the three musketeers, and you just see a few song and dance numbers, we have some sort of conflict at the end with a bad guy deciding to just literally grab honey. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing much to it, really. But then again, what did you guys expect, right? I had to take down the original audio commentary due to a request by Warner Brothers Legal. So my good friend Blue Genocide, he has re-edited the original commentary track, but he's also done the whole review. So thank you very much for that. So you'll first hear a re-edit of that track and then you'll hear some new thoughts from me. So grab some popcorn and you know, Try and enjoy it. Yeah, it is the second last Bosco after all. And I gotta say, I like this opening with the, with the flowers and the way everything, everything looks. So happy. And there's Bruno, who would, um, I mean, this is the second last Bosco. And I thought that this was the last appearance of Bruno and Honey, but in Bosco's picture show, which is the next one which I have seen before, because that's, that's on the Lutons Golden Collection, Volume 6. Um, they both do make appearances. But, uh, yeah, when you're in the end, and this one I would even consider to be the last so-called normal Bosco short, because the picture show uh, short that, that's, that comes up next is uh, a really different one, and I will talk in more detail once we uh, get to that commentary. But this one... Is another one, another fantasy type short where we've got, of course, the Musketeers. As you can imagine, it's of course going to go go back there. They do a lot of songs, more so than in the usual Bosco cartoon, which I thought thought was interesting. And playing with the same formula that's been in a lot of uh, both Bosco and Mary Marley's cartoons, nothing really happens until the last third when the bad guy comes into it and then said so nothing really nothing of note really happens <laughs> except for that I mean I guess there's one way to drink beer that's just yeah that's really bizarre you get one drink <laughs> and then it just she just dances killing more time for this cartoon because we clearly don't you know need more of that don't we <laughs> But uh, there was there would be more more conflict uh, th throughout. Uh, you know, don't, don't even have the story element in the beginning. Uh, why not uh, just have him as the fourth musketeer? Just start off with him fighting off the bad guys, just like the, like uh, we were shown. Start off with that. Get into the story more quicker. Maybe have uh, him kidnap Honey or something or other. I mean, you can only do so much in a short cartoon, and then. And they fight at the end, and, and that's that. Yeah, this was just weird. I mean, with the, the chickens underneath. I'm sure I've seen that gag before. There's a few references that I missed the first time round. So, first of all, you'll hear the Three Musketeers saying their names in this one. Now, if you're familiar with the Three Musketeers book and the Four Musketeers, the names are Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. And here it's Athos, Amos, and Andy, and I missed that, and I think it might be just due to the really crummy audio quality as well. But of course, Amos and Andy, it's a reference to the Amos and Andy radio show, which features two black characters. Of course, in what I guess is not going to shock anyone, they were voiced by two white guys originally, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. But that's what the reference is anyway. We see Honey briefly impersonating, I think it's Mae West. It's sounds like it kind of again the audio is pretty crummy here so and i can't even understand the line she says and i was trying to see if that line actually is referenced from any of her movies or you know, 
whatever she said at the time. So um, definitely let me know in the comments, A, what, what did she say if you can actually hear it? And I'm sure you can find this short somewhere if you look really hard enough, okay? I just can't share it here. But the animation is kind of weird where she becomes a little bit uh, top heavy. It's truly bizarre what these animators have to do sometimes to do these cheap gags, but anyway. So there are a few more references. So at the end of the short, you do hear just barely in this crummy print, you know, was you there, Charlie? And I've since learned that that is actually a reference to a radio character played by Jack Pearl. And I had a look into that and I was trying to figure out that's got to mean something. And it took me a while and yeah, eventually I found the reference right there. And there's probably so many obscure radio references in these old Boscos where even some of the experts in old time radio, because I'm not one of those, but I'm sure there's even some that would hear certain lines and have no idea and then by sheer fluke eventually discover it. But in this case, at least there is an answer. And speaking of answers, you know, I was wondering what that 3.2% is on that alcohol bottle. And that it turns out that was a reference to prohibition. And the 3.2% uh, was an amendment to the Volstead Act, which was basically the act, you know, that banned alcohol and hence the prohibition and the amendment was allowing you know light beer with 3.2 percent alcohol by volume that's what that number references um keep in mind that while prohibition effectively ended in december of 33 with the repeal of the 18th amendment and i as i understand that's the only amendment in the u.s constitution that's been repealed but you know those more knowledgeable and actually you know live in the u.s can correct me if i'm wrong there but as i understand it that's the only amendment that has been repealed but this short came out bef before that so effectively the volstead act was still in force but i think it was more a case of you know what whatever <laughs> let's just start drinking again so i mean the whole prohibition thing is just fascinating really it's something that i really would like to learn more about and we get some repeated animation, which I'm sure my good friend Blue Genocide loves re-editing this sort of stuff. But let's go through them. There's only a few that I could see. So some of the animation of the Musketeers singing, you can see the re redone animation from Three's a Crowd. And the whole thing with Bruno frolicking and looking at the tree with interest, that comes from Bosco's Woodland Days. And the animation of Honey Dancing comes from Bosco in person. So... Yeah, it's just one of those cost-cutting things, and I'm pretty sure that the audience members weren't pedantic at the time, going, wait a minute, I saw that repeated animation before. Boo, I want my nickel back. But no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just interesting to find this sort of thing when it comes to, well, especially these early Boscos. And, you know, in terms of music, and you know, I was having a look to see if any of the songs that were done were original tracks, and it turns out they're... It seems to be all original. I can't seem to find any information whether these tracks actually come from somewhere, except for one. When the Three Musketeers are singing, that appears to be Crosby, Colombo, and Valley. But here, it's just different lyrics. So um, that's something a little uh, different there for you. But also, Crosby, Colombo, and Valley was originally a Merry Melody short, too, that was done by the harmonizing team. So, yeah, there we go. But speaking of music, this is actually probably the biggest highlight for me. It's a very catchy sort of thing, listening to all this music, you know, original or not. It's definitely the highlight here, and a lot of the dance animation as well. I mean, the story is paper thin. I mean, again, what do you expect? You know, it is a Bosco short. And some of the gags seem you know, pretty interesting. Like, you got the one weird gag where, you know, the three musketeers, one is drinking the beer, and the other two are effectively finishing it. I do wonder if there's a censorship issue where the third one, well, you would expect him to burp, right? But maybe there's a censorship thing that it's like, no, you're not allowed to have him burp, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, of course, the chicken honk is great. I may have mentioned in the original track, and we get another hidden Mickey, which seems to be drawn in the style of what Fritz Freelingwood was doing, so there's that. And i got to say, that guy that's just sitting there and allowing the well the bad guy really to use his teeth as a bottle opener and he just sits there staring it's just rather creepy isn't it but yeah it's it's an unremarkable short and 
I mean, it's got its fun moments with its music, some animation, and some of the gags, as I've just pointed out, and I would have put it on the track. But, honestly, yeah, it's fine. Look, I'd say 5.5 out of 10. You know, it, it's okay. It, it's fine. But, of course, we got to end this with the bad guy getting defeated as part of a butt joke, right? But, you know... Yeah, harmonizing love all their butt jokes, don't they? But in any case, can't see what I did there. <laughs> in any case, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.